good morning all today we discuss about arch expansion part 1 the correction of transverse maxillary deficiency can be important component of orthodontic treatment plan and uh, numerous factors can be result in the transverse maxillary deficiency including genetic environmental traumatic and functional which include the abnormal habits such as for example mouth breathing these all can cause the deficiency of mandibular and transverse dimension first the emergency angel is considered the father of rapid maxillary expansion There's a two type of expansion, rapid and slow. Mason's ear angel is the father of rapid maxillary expansion, and Walter Coffin is the father of slow maxillary expansion. Um, we already taught the classification of maxillary expansion, rapid and slow. By classification by McNamara, it is called dental expansion and skeletal expansion. Mainly, the dental expansion. Uh, we got by using the slow expansion of planes and skeletal expansion got from the rapid back, uh, maxillary expansion what are the indications of maxillary expansion first one is cross bite second one is mild crowding uh, third one is the expansion along with you can al also use along with the functional appliances for skeletal class 3 malocclusions distal molar movements and surgical orthodontic these are the main indications of maxillary expansions uh, today we mainly deals with the rapid maxillary expansion in rapid maxillary expansion the rapid palatal expansion of split palate we split the palate may we all know that the to uh, I'll have to have sand as joined by a mid palatal suture. Uh, we split this palate. Before we go into rapid maxillary expansion, there is a simple anatomy of maxilla. Maxilla is a paired bone that articulates with its opposite member and its various other bones, including frontal, ethmoid, uh, nasal, lacrimal, vomer, zygomatic, and palatal bone. The maxilla, the maxilla together with the palatine bone form the hard palate. It's a floor and the greater part of the lateral wall of nasal cavity. Most of the suture attachments of the maxilla to the adjoining bones are at an posterior and superior aspect, leaving the anterior and inferior aspect free, which make it vulnerable for the lateral. displacement because of this reason we can uh, expand in transverse direction because uh, its anterior and the inferior aspect of the suture are free compared to the posterior and superior aspect the intermaxillary and interpalatine sutures are collectively called mid palatine suture the rapid ex uh, maxillary expansion should be initiated prior the uh, Ossification of the mid palatal suture, and um, we should use uh, this rapid palatal expansion before the mid palatal suture ossification. It is commonly occurred in girls in 16 years, and but in boys it it may it may be in 18 years. So before this period, we can use rapid palatal expansion or rapid maxillary expansion for expansion purpose. what are the indications of rm first one is posterior cross bite the post uh, the posterior cross bite is associated with real or relatively maxillary deficiency uh, you all know that the if a, if any maxillary def deficiency in deficiency there's a chance of posterior cross bite is more second one is the class 3 malocclusion class 3 dental or skeletal cross um, we can use anterior or posterior cross bite correction we can use rm mainly for the posterior cross bite correction third one is along with face mask therapy rm is used along with the face mask to loosen the maxillary suture attachment so as to facilitate the protraction of the maxilla 
Next one is cleft palate patient. Cleft palate patient shows mainly collapsed maxillary arch. So we can use RME for correct that. Next, some medical condition like nasal stenosis, poor nasal airway, septal deformities, the recurrent ear and nasal tree uh, infections, and allergic rhinitis, um, DNS. DNS means deviated nasal septum. These all conditions are the main indications of RME. <clears throat> what are the diagnostic aids we need to uh, before we start the army treatment? We, we should take a proper case history and clinical examination. Also, uh, we um, should have the study model with, so we get a more idea about the how much uh, expansion we needed. And for uh, get an idea of mid palate suture ossification, we should take maxillary occlusal radiograph. A PS uh, cephalogram is also a valuable diagnostic aid for, me, for the comparison of uh, how much uh, expansion we got or to diagnose it is a skeletal uh, problem deficiency or the dental deficiency. We get more idea by using. PSF <clears throat> Next, what are the effects of RME? Effects of RME, first one is effect on ma maxilla. Maxilla uh, to open the mid palatal suture and move the uh, helping downward and forward maxillary movement. Effect on maxillary teeth, we can see a midline spacing uh, like diastema between the to maxillary tendon incisor. And the maxillary posterior teeth shows a buckle tipping and extrude. On mandible, it uh, results in downward and backward rotation of mandible. Because of this reason, it increases the facial height. This one reduction in overbite. Uh, this effect of RME on nasal cavity. Which, uh, uh, reduces the resistance to the nasal airflow. So it increases the intranasal space. So to reduce the resistance to nasal airflow. These are the main effects of RME. Next one, the types of RME. There are two types of RME. Removal RME and fixed RME. Removal RME uh, means name itself. It's, it can be removed by patient itself. Um, but mainly the fixed RMEs are used um, compared to the removal RME. In fixed RME, we can classify it into two types, tush, tissue or tooth support, tooth bone RME or tooth bone RME. Tooth and tissue bone RME or tooth bone RME. Example for tooth, uh, tooth and tissue bone RME are the Schwiller type and has type and tooth bone army, Isaacson and Hyrax. Uh, the tooth and tissue bone army means it takes the support from the tooth and uh, tissue. tissue. But in tooth bone armies, it takes the support only from the teeth to uh, the appliance. You can see the two types of armies, bonded and Banded RMEs. The bonded RMEs are mainly used in mixed dentition type. And the banded RMEs are mainly used in uh, after the all permanent teeth are formed, we can use the banded RME. Then mixed dentition period, we can use bonded RME. There's uh, filler type. The, in this type, you can see that the first premolar and first molars are banded. The wire, the, there is a wire tag or soldered on the palatal aspect of band and these wires are get inserted in a acrylic plate. This acrylic plate are split by using and incorporating a screw in its center. The, in hash time, same like the uh, previous one, the first premolar and molar from the either side are banded. And a thick stainless steel wire is uh, wire of 
about 1.2 mm diameter is soldered on the buccal and lingual aspect of the premolar and molar band, connecting each other. So it, it acts as a single unit. And then there is a lingual wire is kept longer as to extend pass to the band both anteriorly and posteriorly. And this band is uh, attached to the acrylic part. And there is a two acrylic part separated by a central screw. But in Isaacson type, Isaacson type, uh, we already told it is a tooth bone. So it takes support only from the uh, tooth, like premolars and molars. And molars are banded and it is connected by a expander coil. Center and there. there is a nut that can be compressed the coil. And the coil spring is made, made to extend between the lingual metal. The flanges that has been soldered and the expander is activated by closing the nuts so the spring gets compressed. Next one is the hierarch type. Uh, this type of appliance make use of special type of screw called hierarch screw. This is the, mo uh, the most commonly used army. It name itself, it is a very hygienic rapid expander. Patient can, uh, patient can easily uh, brush and keep the oral hygiene. The screws have a heavy gauge with the extension that are adapted to the follow the palatal contour and are soldered to the bands on premolars and Models. This is the first part of this uh, arch expansion. In next class, we discuss about the activation of the RME and activation of the RME and uh, the slow expansion. Good morning all. In last class, uh, we, we were discussed about the basics of arch expansion and indications of arch expansion. What is the classification of arch expansion and, and more uh, we are more discussed, uh, discuss, we were more discussed about the RME, rapid maximum expansion its classification, its indication, and its types. Today, uh, this is our suspension part two. We are mainly dealing with, uh, first, we deal with the, what are the design of screw, expansion screw, and next, the how, uh, how we activate the, this uh, RME, and then slow expansion. First one is the, there is the design of typical exam, uh, expansion screw. A typical expansion screw consists of a long body divided into two halves. Each half has a threaded near inner side that receives one end of the double-ended screw. And the screw has a central bossing with a four holes. This is the central bossing. Here is the uh, four holes. Uh, we can see. Mm, this picture and like this there is a four holes in this um, screw. These holes receive a key, this is the key uh, that is used to turn the screw during activation. And by turning of the screw 90 degree means the one uh, quarter time brings about a linear movement of 0.18 mm in the transverse direction. The pattern of threading on either side is of opposite direction. The turning the screw withdraw it from the both side simultaneously. That is the design of the screw. That's the activation schedule of this RME. Uh, different others use a different uh, type of activation. Mainly we, today we discuss about things, uh, 
symptoms activation and simmering and hypertensive activation first one the schedule by teams if the child is uh, child has age below 15 years we do 90 degree activation morning and evening in the patient uh, it uh, if the uh, child has 15 years or below 15 years old in evening and morning 90 degree activation in uh, minutes if the um, child has above 15 years 45 at uh, degree activation is advised in four times a day totally uh, the in both case 180 degree activation we uh, we will get up, uh, after one day but in below 15 years uh, yes um patients 90 degree activation morning and evening and above 15 years patient Uh, 45 degree activation four times a day. In scheduled by simmering and isotherm, in uh, in the growing patients, two ten each day for four to five days, and after that one ten uh, per day till the desired expansion is achieved. In young growing child, but in non-growing adult, two uh, ten each day for a first two days, and One ten uh, per a day for a nest five to seven days, a nest ten uh, every alternative days till desired expansion is achieved. These are the two activation schedule by schedules, uh, one by teams and other by the simmering and isotherms. Uh, how we evaluate the RME treatment? Clinically, we can see that there is a midline diastema. There is space between the uh, you can see in the picture uh, cd there is a space between the two satellite sites in radiography we can assess by maxillary occlusal radiograph and pa sonogram what are the retention following needed uh, after rme treatment it is very difficult uh, to retain the expansion result uh, very difficult to Uh, in some cases, it, right, the relapse will occur. The most others recommended a retention period of not less than three to six months It is very very important because after the uh, we got the expansion almost within one or one point five months, but the retention need three to six months uh, to avoid the relapse. The ISEXM recommended the use of RME appliance itself for the purpose of retention. The screw should be immobilized by using cold cure acrylic, uh, then use for three to six months. Yes, there is an alternative way to keep the expansion of the molars. We can use transpalatal arch. Yes, the what are the contra indications of maxillary expansion? In last class, we discuss about the indications of maxillary expansion. What is the contra indication for maxillary expansion? Single teeth crossbite. Because the single teeth crossbite not need this RME. Because single teeth crossbite need uh, we can use cross elastics. So correct that. In the patient who are uncooperative, because the, if the patient is uncooperative, uh, we don't get the frequent activation, and may uh, they don't. Maintain the good oral hygiene. So the activation, the operation is very important in uh, RME case. RME mag uh, is not carried out after ossification of mid palate suture. If if mid palate suture is ossified, um, there is no use of uh, RME because we don't get any skeletal change. We only get Uh, dental change after that. So, if we need skeletal change, uh, we use the RME before the mid palatal suture ossification. Next contraindication is skeletal asymmetry of maxilla and mandible. If there is a skeletal asymmetry of maxilla and mandible, if we use uh, this type of appliances, it may worse. The skeletal asymmetry may be worse. 
so it is very difficult during the further treatment treatment this vertical go is with steep mandibular plane angle and peridontally deep condition these are the contra indications of maxillary expansion now we already discussed this the retention following rme there are some clinical tips for rme during rme use oral hygiene instruction should be given to the patient very clearly the uh, orthodontic movement of anger teeth should be avoided and the patient should be trained by uh, to use the teeth we uh, we trained the patient very well about the how how you use the key to activate this otherwise the patient uh, do it in a wrong way and uh, we we know the we not let the result so so we should train the patient to use the key Yes, the maxillary occlusal radiograph should be uh, taken in a regular interval to monitor the expansion. Yes, <clears throat> in some cases uh, we already told the army uh, we can we in a uh, child uh, after the mid-palatal suture closure, but sometimes we need uh, after the. Uh, Ossification also we need the skeletal correction. So in that type we do RME treatment along with the surgery. Surgery we can do possible that and the use of RME. Uh, that procedure is called SAR or SARM. SAR means surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion. So here we surgically um, separate the Mid palatal suture oh, already ossified mid palatal suture, so we get a two halves of uh, maxilla. After that, we use the conventional RME, so we get the same type of result. Next one is slow maxillary expansion. The so slow expansion are traditionally we termed the dento alveolar expansion. Along, <coughs> although some skeletal change can be mainly observed, but it's not, uh, it's not very clear. Uh, not observable. So only uh, alveolar expansion is there. Slow expansion in about two to five months for the treatment. The classification of slow expansion: removable appliance, coffin spring, cord helix, fixed appliance, negative expander. Removable appliance: uh, uh, we can use jack screws for the expansion. Uh, with Holy with tax screw for the expansion of uh, this uh, maxillary teeth. But we only get the dendroalveolar expansion here. This one is the coffin spring. It is an omega shaped spring. We can uh, see that uh, there is omega shaped spring. There is a two halves, uh, acrylic halves separated by a space. By activating this. Omega spring, we can get uh, some amount of expansion. Next one is cord helix. It's a very commonly used uh, ex law expansion appliance in clinics. Uh, here you can see four helix. That's why it's called cord helix with a anterior segment and posterior segment. This is the anterior segment and this is the posterior segment. Um, in this, we can do uh, anterior expansion and posterior expansion. That's the advantage of this appliance. Uh, before we play, uh, we place this um, patient. We do an extra oral expansion. We expand extra orally, then fit. So we uh, we will get uh, some amount of expansion by extra oral expand, uh, expansion for activation. An intraoral activation means for posterior expansion. Posterior means the molar and premolar expansion. So the premolar expansion, we do, there is a B type of bench in the anterior region. So we get a posterior expansion. If, if we need an anterior expansion, like in the second picture, anterior expansion, we do this like of, uh, this like bend. 
on the posterior region, posterior septum. So we get an anterior displacia. So that's the advantage of port helix. Yes, nitro expander, which is a <coughs> new one. Nitro expander is this is the nitro expander. Yeah, you can see this. Um, we first we ban uh, the molars, and there is a connect connect the with the wire to with the uh, extend to the canine, and these two separate part is connected by a expander. Uh, actually, when we uh, place place it, it is not act as a spring spring like action. But when we when we use uh, um, hot tea or hot foods, it it get activated and get an expansion. That um, by that way it's work. Next one, arch expansion by using fixer appliance. During fixer appliance itself, we can expand the wire and uh, engage it, and we get a some amount of expansion. We can also use cordelix along with. Uh, sometimes you use an auxiliary wire, like right, along the arch wire. We can use a much uh, thicker wire, expanded thicker wire, and place in <coughs> along with the fixer treatment. We get a some amount of expansion also. Yes, the comparison of RME and slow expansion. In expansion type RME skeletal. Slow expansion mostly dental expansion rate rapid rapid in max, uh, rapid expansion and slow expansion is slow tissue reaction first one is traumatic second one is physiology force type greater force is needed for the army and smaller force is needed for the slow expansion and the activation frequency uh, more frequent activation needed for the army every day. But in the slow expansion, we need a weekly uh, activation. The treatment duration is short for army and long for slow expansion. Yes, mainly before with palatal suture fusion, army used for any age, we can use slow expansion. And retention, more relapsed stands for army, less 